Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Zendaidukai and in this video I will tell you everything you need to know about switching to Linux and using Bitwig. Then let's get started. Why Linux is often asked. On the one hand because it's easy. On the other hand because it has advantages not only for music production. In my opinion Linux with Pipewire has the most advanced sound driver architecture available for money. Moreover it's free of charge. This video is about dropping a few terms into the arena and explaining them so you know whether they are important or not when you read or hear them. Pipewire is extremely optimized for low latency. But not only that. Pipewire processes audio, MIDI and with the Wyland display server, which will be included in almost all distributions next year, also video. Pipewire already does this, but not every distribution already offers Wyland as a standard. This means that you can use simple patch-based software with virtual cables to connect all inputs to all outputs. Audio, MIDI and video. Pull a virtual cable and the connection is established. First things first, you need a Linux distribution. Bitrick recommends Ubuntu as a reference. You should use that too. No matter what fancy Linux distribution your body or the internet praises. With Ubuntu you have a distribution for modern desktop computer with which you can do everything from music production, internet, office and multimedia. And of course you also have Pipewire. Some notes on the installation. Pretty much all Linux distributions offer to encrypt the hard disk during installation. This is basically a good thing, but it also requires more CPU when reading and writing from and to the hard disk. So it takes away a little of the performance of your computer. If you don't want this, then don't encrypt your hard disk. I also recommend the integration of FlatHub. It's like an additional app store that gives you access to even more software. Software packages that is available via FlatHub is called a Flatpak. The setup is very simple and is described on the FlatHub.org website. The links are in the video description. As of November 2023, I strongly advise against the Bitwig installation as a Flatpak package, as the package was made only half-heartedly and still has some problems in many places. And it would be great if you would give me a thumbs up and a subscription and recommend me to others. Thank you very much. I want to dispel two myths that persists. And this is only because there are many articles floating around on the internet without a date. Many of which are 20 years old or more. And their recommendations should never be followed nowadays. First of all, it's about the terms real-time kernel or the actually correct term low latency kernel. Don't worry, this won't be very technical. But you should understand what it is and why you don't need it. A real-time kernel is for operating systems that are designed to do a single thing as quickly as possible. In other words, real-time. You find this in embedded systems and in time-critical environments. A desktop system, like the one we have on our computer today, does many things at the same time and not in real time. Internet browser, music, office and so on. A real-time kernel would be very bad and counterproductive here. A low latency kernel is designed to have a very low latency, meaning very little delay in input and output. This used to be an issue until around 2020, when it made sense to install such a special kernel. Today, low latency is standard in all kernels. Certainly there is room for optimization here and there, but that is in the range of 98% to get the last 2% out of a computer. The effort is not worth it in 99% of the cases. The other myth concerns the Czech audio server, which was THE audio server until around 2020-2021. It also had an absolutely amazingly low latency and there were already these patch base with the virtual cables. But it also had some disadvantages. For example, the computer froze if you accidentally disconnected the audio interface or performed other hot plug actions. It was also very inconvenient to connect and operate consumer devices via Bluetooth, for example, and much more. Fortunately, we now have Pipewire, because 
PipeWire has all the advantages of Czech Audio and combines even more multimedia with MIDI, audio, video, Bluetooth, consumer devices and all that with low latency. For a rough overview of how the audio system is structured under Linux, here's a slide showing what it used to look like and what it looks like today. Alsa is basically the driver layer, where in other operating systems drivers have to be installed, Alsa does that. A quick note, a lot of devices that are standard compliant work under Linux without additional drivers, thanks to Alsa. Standard compliant means that they stick to certain industry standards and uh, do not contain any exotic and incompatible propriety extensions. Fortunately, this is becoming less and less common these days and is often only found in very dubious cheap electronic devices. So now you have a lot of theoretical knowledge to be able to understand a few terms correctly. Here comes the easy part, the installation of Bitwig. You log into your Bitwig account, then download the DEB package. A DEB file is an installation package like a setup exe file for Windows or a DMG file for Mac. Once the file has been downloaded, double clicking on the file should be enough to start the installation routine and performs the installation. You will then need to enter your password and your Bitwig will be installed. In case this does not work for some reason, and this happens with every operating system from time to time, you can also install the installation or the updates in the so-called console or command line or terminal. To do this, navigate to the download directory in which your downloaded Bitwig package is located and then install it with the following command. Upper and lower case is important here as everywhere in Linux. And a little tip for the console, commands, file names and folder names can be completed with the tab key. For example, type the beginning of the file name, press tab and the console will complete the file name as long as it is unique. If there are several possibilities, the completion stops and the input options are displayed by pressing the tab key again. Now you're ready to start making great music with the best operating system in the world. If you want to know more about applications for music production on Linux, please let me know in the comments what you are interested in. Now it was wonderful with you as always, but unfortunately our time is over. My name is Udo Sendaidukai, thanks for watching and paying attention and I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care, see you then, ciao ciao.